Hello students, welcome for today's e-learning session of Shri GM Donda Primary School, SPEI. Standard 7th, Subject Social Science. Students, today we are going to start the 4th chapter, that is Rajput age. So students, you must have seen many palaces, okay? As you can see in the figure here. So, such palaces were constructed by kings in olden times. We come across many such palaces, some of which are in ruined conditions and while others are in good conditions till now. There is still difference between the construction of structures in present times and the kind of work done in earlier ages. You can compare the forts and your houses. Okay. From these differences, we can make out the period during which a particular structure was constructed. Monuments constructed during the Rajput age can be seen even today. So, to know about that era, let us know about the main Indian dynasties of that time. Rise of new dynasties So students, after the death of Emperor Harshvardhana, Many feudal lords declared themselves to be independent and found new dynasties as per their choice. So, feudal lord. Now, we have to understand first of all what feudal lord means. So, the person who collected the revenue of a particular province was called landlord or feudal lord, which was also called as Samantha. So, when they collected such revenue, some portion of those revenue was given to the king and the remaining part was kept with them only for the maintenance of the army. And such army was sent whenever king needed help. In time, these landlords became powerful and feudalism, that is Samantha Shahi, came into existence. So, the kingdoms of the early medieval period were divided into two parts, North India and South India. So, the main dynasties ruling the North India were Gurjar, Pratihara, Pal, Chalukya, Parmar, Chauhan, and Gohils and the main dynasties ruling South India were Pallava, Rashtrakuta, Kalyani Chalukya, Cher, Pandya and Chola. Now we are going to learn about these dynasties in detail. So the first one after the death of Harsh many kings ascended the throne of Kanoj. Among them, Yashovarma is considered as a powerful ruler. After him, Pratihara dynasty established its rule in Kanoj. They protected India from Arab invasions. Mir Bhoj, who was also known as Bhoj, was the most powerful ruler of this dynasty. He fought many battles with Rashtrakutas during his reign. Then came the Parma dynasty, which ruled Malwa, and Ujjain and Dharnagri were the two main cities of Malwa. Dharnagri is known as the Dhar district of Madhya Pradesh at present. King Monj and King Bhoj of Parma dynasty were not only good rulers but also good poets. They gave patronage to the scholars in their courts. Mir Bhoj made Dharnagri the center of studies and established a university that is the Vidya Pit for the study of Sanskrit literature. Many architectural monuments were built during this time. The Parmas fought many battles with the Chalukyas of the south. After the death of Raja Bhoj, the kingdom of Malwa weakened. Then came Pala dynasty and 
Sen dynasty, which ruled in Bihar and Bengal. The rulers of Pala dynasty had added Pala to their names, and so the dynasty was known as the Pala dynasty. Then many Rajput rulers of the Chauhan or Chahaman dynasty ruled over various parts of Rajasthan during seventh or seventh and eighth century CE. Of them, one branch ruled over Shakambari, a place near Lake Sambhu, which is to the north of Ajmer. In the beginning of the eighth century, Ajay Raj ascended the throne of Ashkabari. In the twelfth century, he established the city of Ajmeru, which later came to be known as Ajmer. The rulers of Chauhan dynasty captured Delhi, the capital of the Tomar kings, and established their supremacy. Prithviraj III was a powerful ruler of the Chauhan dynasty. He is unparalleled in the history of India. Then other dynasties. So the Gohils of Mewar, who were later known as the Sisodia Rajputs. hold a unique position in the medieval history it is said that bappa rawal established this dynasty during the rajput era the chedi dynasty ruled over jabalpur which is to the south of river narmada which is in madhya pradesh it was known as the chedi dynasty of kalchuri with its capital at tripuri In the medieval era in Gujarat the Rajput dynasties of the Chavdas followed by the Solankis ruled over Anilwada Patan there were many valiant rulers of this dynasty Now we will go through the dynasties in South India So during the Rajput era many big and small states were established in South India After the demise of Pulkeshi II, his vast empire disintegrated into smaller states. The reign of many rulers of the Chalukya dynasty is noteworthy. So, first of all, we will go to the Pallava dynasty. So, the kingdoms of Pallava and Chola dynasty are also included in the states of South India. Narasim Varma was a strong ruler of the Pallava dynasty and the emperors of this dynasty were lovers of art and literature. The Kailashnath temple of Kanchi is the best example of Pallava architecture. Now let's go through Chola dynasty. Tanjore was its capital. The rulers of Chola dynasty attacked Ceylon and annexed many territories. The Cholas had a powerful navy because of which they could attack countries even across the sea. Rajaraja I adopted a very systematic way of administration in his state. He started with the measurement of land and local self-government. So, Rashtrakutas. Rashtrakutas ruled South India. With the fall of Chalukya dynasty, Rashtrakuta came to power. Rashtrakuta means head of the state or area. It is believed that the founder of the dynasty was an officer of that community, and hence the dynasty was named after him. Out of many rulers, Govind III was the most powerful king. In the eighth century, he established a powerful kingdom in Tripitaka. Then came. the pandyas so pandyas also ruled over south india the pandya dynasty is believed to be very ancient megasthenes the greek traveler notes that females used to rule in this community the pandyas ruled in present day madurai and runel valley in tamil nadu then cheras cheras also ruled over in south india and is now known as kerala in ancient time kerala was part of tamil nadu state athan 2 and cheran settlement were the strong rulers of this dynasty now we will go through the pride of rajput rulers 
so the rajput rulers were very brave they felt proud to give up their lives for their country to die but not but fear to protect those who seek refuge to speak the truth and fight for the truth were the special traits of the rajput even rajput women were also known for their chastity and fearlessness they sent their husbands sons and brothers to the battlefield with a smiling face they were so brave that if need be they would fight on the battlefield they preferred jawhar that is to burn alive if their husbands were defeated or attained martyrdom in war the heroic stories of rajput age were engraved in golden letters in the history of india so students we have come towards the end of the session i hope that you have understood the chapter very well and complete the writing work assigned to you in pdf file thank you have a nice